All right, mathematicians, it's time to prep ourselves for those proofs. So let's consider some postulates and diagrams in section 2.3. And our essential question, in a diagram, what can be assumed and what needs to be labeled? So these are some things that we have already discussed in geometry land. So we will have a more formal discussion through this lesson. So mathematicians will be able to identify postulates using diagrams and sketch and interpret diagrams. Alright, to start off this lesson, take a look at this image. How many colors do you see? Well, hopefully you identified three. We only have the white, the green, and the pink. It appears as if there's two different shades of pink, but there's actually only one. This happens to be an example of an optical illusion. All right, I'll give you one more image to consider. Are the purple lines straight or do they bend? Well, for me, it kind of depends on where I look on the image, but it definitely seems like they bend. Well, this is also an example of an optical illusion because those purple lines are actually straight. So our question then is, can you really trust your eyes? Sometimes things aren't the way they seem. All right, so with this idea of can you really trust your eyes, what you see, let me reiterate, when you make a drawing or view a drawing, information is being communicated. So we label units of measure when we state solutions because we are communicating information. The same will be true about diagrams and geometry. We must not make false conclusions just because things appear to be true. We must see specific markings and or see given information in order to make conclusions. So when you draw a diagram, you're communicating with others. So it's important that you include sufficient information in the diagram. So let's take a look at this diagram to determine what we can conclude to be true. And of course, we support and explain our reasoning with definitions, postulates, theorems, and or implied statements that we are learning along the way. So I'm looking at this diagram, and I can conclude that these two lines are perpendicular. They form right angles because I see the right angle symbol. So I would formally say line EG intersects line AH at a right angle, therefore they are perpendicular. I cannot conclude that these two lines intersect to form a right angle, so I cannot conclude they are perpendicular. I, have, I don't have enough information to make that conclusion. So it's just a little bit of an idea of what we're trying to say. There's a lot more we can conclude from this picture. So we're just getting started. All right, here are seven postulates involving points, lines, and planes, which are the three undefined terms that we started the year with. So here's our formal postulates involving these three undefined terms. Also learning our implied statements um, as well. So what we're going to practice is just doing an illustration if-then statement. What do I mean by that? Here's an example for this first two postulates. So our postulate says, through any two points, there exists exactly one line. All right, so let's look at it as an illustration. Our if-then statement as an illustration looks like this. So if I have two points, then there exists exactly one line. All right, so let's consider this postulate. How could I illustrate an if-then statement for if two lines intersect, then their intersection is exactly one point. Looks something like this. You just replace the words with a picture and labels. All right, now you try. So take these two postulates kind of together. They're kind of about the same thing. Through any three non-collinear points, there exists exactly one plane. So break it down. What's the if part and the then part? Replace the words with an illustration. So pause the video here and try this one on your own. All right, let's see how you did. Does it look something like this? Just need three non points. So if 
there are three nonclinear points, then there exists exactly one plane. All right, let's see how you do with this one. Provide an if-then illustration for this postulate. All right, let's see how you did. So if it looks something like this, excellent. Doesn't have to look exactly like this. But what we're communicating in our picture is if there are two points in a plane that lie in a plane, then the line containing them lies in the plane. All right, last one. Try this one. Pause the video here and see if you can come up with an illustration if-then statement. All right, I know those planes intersecting is a tricky image to practice, but hopefully you're getting better. So what we're looking for here is if two planes intersect, so that's my image, then their intersection is a line. So I just draw a line where the two planes intersect. Again, we're focusing on what do our eyes appear to see. And we must have enough information in our diagrams to communicate what's going on. So consider what if, what it would mean if each postulate were not true. Well, for instance, if the two-point postulate were not true, then you would be able to draw two different lines through two points, meaning the lines would need to bend as shown. All right, now let's practice going from our if then illustration statement to words. So let's consider example A. If, and then just look at your picture, how would you describe what's going on? Don't put more into the picture than what you see. So all I see are two lines intersecting. So that's exactly what I say in words. If two lines intersect, then next I see that there's a point of intersection. So I would say there's the intersection is exactly one point. Look at example B. If I see two planes intersecting, so that's what I say in words, then their intersection is a line. All right, let's take a look at identifying postulates from a diagram. So use this diagram to write examples of the plane point postulate and the plane line postulate. All right, so I see plane P, and it contains at least three non-collinear points, A, B, and C. I also see point A and B lie in plane P. So line N containing points A and B also lies in plane P. Again, just learning some of this vocabulary and language and how to structure what we see in a diagram. All right, let's consider sketching a diagram and interpreting the diagram. So sketch diagrams showing line TV intersecting segment PQ at point W, so that segment TW is congruent to segment WV. So start by drawing line TV and labeling points T and V. Next, draw point W at the midpoint of segment TV and then mark the congruent segment pieces. And then your final step is to draw segment PQ through point W. So we should have something that looks similar to this. All right, let's take a look at example four. Which of the following statements cannot be assumed from the diagram? Points A, B, and F are collinear. Let's take a look. We've got point A, point B. So far, they are together on the same line, and F. Okay? We can conclude that. Points E, B, and D are collinear. Let's take a look. We've got point E, B, and D. Hmm. Not sure we can conclude that. Let's keep going. We've got line AB perpendicular to plane S. So here we have line AB. Here's plane S is the lighter shaded plane. And I do see a right angle symbol right there, which does communicate it's perpendicular to the plane. So that's true. How about line CD perpendicular to plane T? Here's plane T, the darker image. 
is plain T. And then line CD, here it is, line CD. And do they appear to be perpendicular? Maybe. I don't see a symbol, but maybe they are perpendicular. Let's take a look at line AF intersecting line BC at point B. So line AF, line BC, and intersecting at point B. That is true. All right, so it looks like there's only two of these statements that we could not conclude to be true. We could not assume them to be true. And that was points E, B, and D collinear. Since there's no line drawn connecting E, B, and D, we cannot assume they are collinear. And then the other statement here, line C, D perpendicular to plane T, without a right angle marking, which we don't see one here, we cannot assume that line CD is perpendicular to plane T. Everything else has enough to communicate for us to conclude true. I leave you with this optical illusion. Bring clarifying questions and get ready to practice and prep for those proofs. See you in class.